Hey guys, welcome back to Flix Recap. My name is Luke Pelletier and today we're covering the 2006 comedy Click starring Adam Sandler. Before we start, be sure to drop a like, leave a comment, and of course subscribe to Flix Recap if you dig the breakdown. And as a disclaimer, this video includes my own personal commentary and analysis. It's not a substitute for the film itself. Links to purchase the film are in the description below. Alright, let's do it. The movie starts by introducing us to Michael Newman, an architect. We're also introduced to his wife, Donna, and their two kids, Samantha and Ben. At work, Michael's boss, John Ammer, makes him work a lot, which results in him often not getting to spend too much time with his family, even though he likes it, and now the only quality time he gets with his kids is before work, when they watch Dragon Tales together. Later at work, John, Michael's boss, offers Michael an opportunity to get promoted to partner if he designs a luxury hotel for a Japanese country and they buy it. Of course, this is an amazing opportunity for Michael, so he agrees to work on it, but then he's reminded that he was supposed to go camping with his family and after work, he's also late to Ben's swimming practice. When Michael gets there, he mistakes a random other boy as Ben and walks up to him saying, that's my son, until he finds out he's Asian. I guess Adam Sandler could pass for Asian, but Donna cannot. He also meets Ben's swimming teacher, Bill, who's great with Ben. And he becomes a little jealous and makes fun of his super tight speedo. A couple days later, during the 4th of July, Michael spends all his time on the phone with his boss while his family is enjoying the fireworks. This annoys Michael's mother, Trudy, and she tells him that he'll die early if he continues to overwork and eat junk food for the rest of his life. Later at home, Michael and Donna get into a fight when Michael tells her they need to postpone the camping trip because he can't go. Eventually, he calms her down and starts working on his new project by watching an Asian architecture documentary. And he hits himself when he accidentally mistakes Ben's helicopter remote for the TV remote. So, irritated by the mix-up, Michael heads out to the supermarket to buy a universal remote control. At Bed Bath & Beyond, Michael looks everywhere for a remote, but he can't find it, and eventually he just falls into a mattress. When he turns around, he spots a section of the store called Beyond. Now, I've never found this section of Bed Bath & Beyond, but when he gets there, he meets a mysterious man named Morty. Michael asks Morty about the remote, who then takes him to a large warehouse called Way Beyond. Morty then grabs a weird-looking remote and offers it to him for free. Morty tells Michael that the remote will program itself when he points and clicks the buttons. Michael gets confused and asks why he can get it for free, and Morty tells him that good guys need a break every once in a while. Morty also tells Michael the remote is refundable even though it was free. Kinda sus, but okay. When Michael gets home, he continues working on his project when his dog starts barking because he wants to go outside. After barking for a while, Michael gets angry and points the remote at Sundance, pressing the volume down button, and somehow it actually works. And the dog becomes completely quiet while he's still barking, but Michael just thinks he's hallucinating. When he finally takes his dog out, he starts getting irritated again as the dog takes a really long time. So he points the remote at the dog again while pressing fast forward, and just like before, it works and they quickly get back inside, making Michael believe the remote actually works and that he can use it in real life. The next day, Michael uses the remote to go back in time and he gets emotional when he sees himself playing football with his friends when he was little. He also rewinds to his making of and actually sees uh, his parents making him. Then Michael starts using the remote to fast forward through family dinner, arguments, and even sleeping with his wife. After dinner, fast-forwarding through intercourse, Donna tells him he was done very quickly and that he didn't satisfy her the way he used to, and Michael realizes he doesn't remember anything that happened or any conversations he had during dinner. So he calls Morty and asks what's going on, who explains that during fast-forward, his body is kind of on autopilot. So even though his body does what he would do, his mind skips ahead. Afterwards, Michael uses the remote to fast-forward through sickness cold showers, and traffic, and he finds out he can use it to change his skin color, speak another language, and make his boss fatter. He also presents his project on autopilot mode to the Japanese businessman, which seems to be going great until John accidentally makes fun of Japan's baseball players, mistaking their names for Asian meals. So the men excuse themselves and have a private conversation, which Michael overhears by using the remote, translating their conversation, and upping the volume. 
thus revealing that the Japanese team disliked Michael's design, saying that it was probably made after watching a bad documentary on Asian architecture. Eww, got him. And that they wanted more rooms to maximize their profits and not a stupid river in the lobby. And they decide they're going to end the meeting so that they can have jello shots at TGI Fridays. But when they sit back down, Michael uses the overheard conversation to win over the businessman and he proposes to go do jello shots and they close the deal. All right, if you've made it this far, you're kicking back and enjoying the video. Now would be a great time to subscribe to Flix Recap. Subscribing is absolutely free and it helps me bring you even more dope content. Okay, plug over. Back to the recap. When Michael gets home, he's super happy and he gets gifts for his wife and children and he tells them about the great news. However, the next day when Michael gets to work, his boss tells him that he hasn't been promoted and that if he wants to, he needs to work further on the project and get the Japanese's approval for his final work, which will easily take him a couple more months. Michael's furious for obvious reasons and uses the remote to pause John and fart in his face. Michael starts thinking about fast-forwarding to him actually getting his promotion but asks Morty beforehand who tells him about a kid's cereal commercial where a leprechaun keeps searching for the end of the rainbow until he finally finds it and it's just cornflakes. Michael has no idea what Morty meant but still he decides not to go through with fast-forwarding through a couple of months. When Michael gets home, he's still upset and he tells his kids that their drawings are bad. So they start crying and then he gets in a fight with Donna after she told the kids they had to return their gifts because there was a mix-up at dad's work. Afterwards, Michael realizes he made a mistake and decides to skip ahead to his promotion anyway. He ends up at his promotion party, a year later. During the year, his marriage got worse and worse and he and Donna actually started counseling. Ben and Samantha have grown up and don't watch the cartoons anymore that Michael used to enjoy watching with them and his dog passed away. God, could all this really happen in a year? Are you sure? Either way, Michael breaks down and promises Donna that he'll be a better man and asks her not to leave him. They make out and Michael automatically fast forwards to after they've done the deed. With the dog, somehow. And again, Michael finds out that he couldn't satisfy Donna. Michael's confused because he didn't choose to fast forward any of it and goes to Morty who tells him the remote uses its memory to adjust to Michael's preferences and since he fast forwarded a year, there was a lot of hooking up, which he skipped, which the remote now does automatically. Now, every time he has intercourse or showers, drives or gets sick, the remote is going to fast forward automatically. Now, Michael regrets using the remote and returns the remote to Morty, but it automatically reappears in his hand when he tries giving it back. Then he tries destroying the remote or throwing it away, but it reappears in his hand every time. The next day, Michael goes to work on a bicycle without showering so that he avoids being automatically fast forwarded. At work, his boss tells him about his plans to retire and travel to Morocco, which would make Michael the new head of his department and maybe eventually even CEO. Out of nowhere, Michael is fast forwarded 10 years. Now he's the CEO, rich and obese. He goes home and Ben and Samantha are teenagers. Ben has also become a pretty obese guy and Samantha has started dating someone. Also, Donna eventually divorced him and is now dating Ben's swimming teacher, Bill. So, for obvious reasons, Michael fights him. During the fight, the family dog jumps on Michael, causing him to get knocked out because he hits his head against the wall. Six years later, Michael wakes up with Donna by his side, who tells him that after he went into a coma, they found cancer in his body. So he had to have treatment for years, and after he beat cancer, he also had a heart attack, and he's not obese anymore. At work, Michael meets his adult son again who's lost a lot of weight. Michael wants to take Ben, Samantha, and their grandparents out for an ice cream, which is when he finds out his father died. Michael starts crying and goes to his dad's grave and uses the remote to go back to see the last time he saw his dad. This is when he dropped by Michael's office and asked to take him out for dinner. Just him, Michael, and Ben. But Michael rejected without even looking at his dad. And after he kept asking, Michael yelled at him. So his dad leaves with tears in his eyes. This shocks Michael and makes him feel super guilty. I'm not going to lie to you. When I saw this in theaters, I walked out. That's right, this is one of the only movies to ever make me break down while watching it. All of a sudden, Morty appears and apologizes for killing Michael's dad. I don't really know how Morty did that, but, you know. Oh, it's because he tells Michael he's actually the angel of death. Michael gets angry and attacks Morty, but has no luck since he's a frickin' angel. 
and not just an angel, the angel of death. Michael's desperate now and asks for the remote to take him to a good place, and he gets fast forwarded several years into the future to Ben's wedding. At the wedding, Michael finally gets to see his mom again and also meets his grown up daughter who calls Donna's husband, dad. Michael has a heart attack. He wakes up in the hospital that night with Ben and Samantha by his side, and Michael finds out that Ben is skipping his honeymoon because of a business deal. So he gets out of the hospital, still not in shape, following them and falls onto the ground, and just before he passes out, he tells Ben to always put family first. He apologizes to Samantha for not being there for her, and tells Donna he'll always love her. And then he dies. But out of nowhere, Michael wakes up in Bed Bath & Beyond. Everything was just a dream. When he goes outside, he's super happy to see his normal car. When he gets home, he hugs his whole family and promises to spend more time with them. This is when he finds the remote on his counter with a note from Morty which says that he's getting a second chance because good guys need a break. Michael throws it away, and this time, it doesn't reappear. <sighs> I like this movie. It's a bit of a roller coaster, but it's just meta enough to get all the senses stimulated while not losing sight of a really good moral. But what do y'all think? Let me know in the comments below. And of course, be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the next recap. Until next time.